November 16th town board meeting. Please stand for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, true to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Bill Carlos, second ward. Joe Cotty, third ward. Joe Silapora, fifth ward. Ann Shershen, sixth ward. John Basie, deputy town supervisor. Felicia Salvatore, town clerk. Danielle Strauch, attorney for the town. Tonight's agenda isn't the longest agenda. We have a few items on it. And our first item will be discussion on Arlington Avenue and the Tinkleman project. The second item will be authorized the deputy supervisor to sign the line manager agreement for our exterior lights at the police station and the oil center. Number three is authorized Deputy Supervisor Sign and IMA with SPAC and Hill School District in reference to the resource officer. Four is authorized the tax cert settlement with gasoline and petroleum. Five, an appointment of a full time network specialist in the police department, Thomas F. Comerford. Six, ratify software support for water, sewer, miscellaneous rents and charges and levies. Seven, Contract lease computer systems integrators. Eight, accept the highway superintendent Debbie Andrews retirement. Nine, appoint Trish McLaughlin to the board of assessment. Ten, accept certificate of attendance Richard Davidson and Peter Fennell from the planning board. Eleven, file a petition notice of petition to refer to legal Neptune Capital. Twelve is a decision on the German on the O'Neill Dutton property. We have one SC tonight, to Central Hudson Street Light Authority Order for Sheridan Drive. With that said, I make a motion to suspend the rules for any comment on town board agenda items. So move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Does anybody like to address anything that's on the town board? Mr. Armstrong. A couple items of clarification. This gas name, petroleum, which one is that? Do we know where it's located? I will find out for you. It's up on 44. Across from me, it's the Sunoco. Is it Sunoco? It's the, where the donut shop. Further out? Oh, the next one out from. Over near the uh, Rifters, the New Guild, General Jim's. It's right by Low Motion. Low Motion, oh, well, and then the uh, on that same side. Okay, and and this is a this is a they getting money back? Do we know? Is that what's uh, happening here with their tax? Uh, is that what that is about, or no? It's a settlement, and the settlement is the assessment will reduce from one point one million to eight hundred seventy-five thousand, reduction of two hundred twenty-five thousand, and that she gives us the backup to two hundred twenty-five thousand reduction. Yeah. In order to petition your real property taxes and per county tax bill be adjusted accordingly. And the petition will be reimbursed for any overpayment or interest or credit corresponds to these. But I don't see the. Yeah, it wasn't attached. Yeah, she didn't attach the actual dollar figure to that. If you want to call me in the morning, I can get you that. Okay. So that, I guess what I'm getting at, that should involve the fire department too, the fire district? Yeah. And we got to find out how much that's going to be for each. The other one was the. the um, Number six, the water sewer uh, re-levy. What, what does that pertain to? Will it's software that Mr. Fink is purchasing that helps him um, do that. Oh, okay. Nothing to do as far as people being reassessed no. or something or changes in the assessments and, or no. whatever? No, no it's software on program that he's purchasing to put it online and change things around, I think. All right, thank you. I'm not mistaken. Anybody else would like to discuss any items that are currently on the agenda? If not, make a motion to resume the rules. Second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Number one will be a presentation with Mr. Wilson and associates from Tinkleman. Thank you very much. Um, uh, with me tonight, uh, Eric Nyler and uh, Jason Lickman from uh, uh, Tickleman Architecture. 
Um, you, I'm sure the board is aware of the redevelopment uh, that has been going on over in the Springside Road, Van Wagner Road area, just a little north of the Holy Trinity Church. Uh, started a few years ago with uh, when Tingleman Architecture moved from the city of Poughkeepsie and took over an old decrepit building and really transformed the place. Um, uh, and uh, later the uh, Center for uh, Child Abuse Prevention took over uh, a significant portion of it, but there have been other rehabilitations of some of the other uh, buildings uh, over um, uh, near that building, two of them residential and one is in use for uh, uh, office. But uh, kind of a continuing as part of that redevelopment an effort. Um, there, there has been um, uh, construction of, of new townhomes, um, and uh, there is a, uh, a new restaurant that is slated to come, come online on the north side of Springside Avenue um, sometime, I guess, next second quarter next year. Spring, we're hoping. Yeah. Late spring, probably. Yeah. Um, but what also has been happening, too, you know, it's just, uh, you know, kind of creating opportunities. Uh, you know, this has sort of been, uh, in, in a way, in my opinion at least, uh, is kind of a neg little neglected corner of the town, mm -hmm. probably going back to when the, the westbound arterial was installed sometime in the 1980s. Um, uh, you know, what's happening here is as uh, improvements are being made, additional opportunities uh, are uh, sort of appear. Uh, and uh, Steve Tickleman and his staff uh, are pretty good about uh, spotting those opportunities and taking advantage of them. Most recently uh, is the purchase of 33 Arlington Avenue, which is the old Rondout Electric building. Um, they have been in front of the planning board for uh, site plan approval, have received site plan approval uh, to kind of reactivate that building. Uh, um, the, the problem there is a lack, a general lack of parking. So what they have as part of this, the planning board's approval is uh, essentially allows them to reactivate only a part of the building due to a, a lack of parking. Uh, so they have um, uh, purchased uh, some additional lands to the north of that uh, area, um, and uh, they're looking to put uh, put parking on that for, for the Rondout Electric. But it raises the question uh, about the need for additional um extension of the Arlington Town Center, which was the sort of the precipitating event that, that, that allowed for the redevelopment of, of Springside Avenue and, and the buildings that we see just slightly to the to the west. Uh, but I'd also like to talk to the board about, uh, you know, the, uh, Eric and Jason are here to talk about rezoning of the 33 Arlington Avenue and and the additional parking area to, to the north. Uh, but I would also like to take the opportunity to talk with the board about uh, the possibility of extending that zone to include other properties that are not controlled uh, by, by Tinkleman, uh, specifically Shrek Electric and possibly some of the um, uh, some of the existing housing along Arlington Avenue that connects back over to, to Taft Avenue. And, and you have to remember all of these, the, that entire area was always considered to be part of, of Arlington mm -hmm. until the arterial came along and literally cut it off uh, from you know from its, uh, the properties neighboring to the south. Um, so that's sort of the overview of the discussion tonight and I'm going to kick it over to Eric and, and Jason to take it. Great. I'm, I'm really here. Uh, Jason's been doing a great job on Arlington and I'm going to turn it over to him. I'm here primarily just to uh, thank uh, the board uh, the town board, the planning board, Neil Wilson, Eric Holman, Tim Sickles, everybody that we've worked with. I mean, I've been on the, these projects since the very beginning when we turned the vegetable warehouse into our office. And just the spirit of cooperation from everybody uh, that, that we've worked with over the years has been uh, tremendous and uh, greatly appreciated by, by me and the other people, uh, you know, Mike Lockwood and, and Jason and the staff that have worked with you all. And, uh, just don't want that to go unsaid, and uh, I know Steve feels that same way. He couldn't be here tonight. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jason. He's going to walk you through the uh, some things. Good evening. Uh, I just want to give you a little background uh, of what, of what Eric, um, Eric and Neil were speaking of. This is the area that we are discussing this evening. Uh, we call it Van Wagner Place. Um, this building here, 25 Van Wagner, was the first building that Tickleman purchased, which was the abandoned uh, warehouse building. And originally it looked like this. It was very decrepit and, and run down. And presently today it's the home of our uh, architectural office. It is also the home of Poughkeepsie and the Child Abuse Center. 
which now looks like this. These are renderings, but they're exactly the same as how you're going to find it on the street. Um, you know, upon that, the project has been very successful. And as you know, we've moved on to doing 22 units on the hillside. Uh, we call it hillside, but on sites in Springside. And here's a rendering of what that looks like. And the restaurant that Eric spoke of is going to be on the bottom lower, lower level of this building here, located mm -hmm. on Springside. Um, the 22 apartments, uh, we have one left. So that's, wow. you know, that's very good. Um, you know, and we're moving on now to expand this uh, community that we're developing into um, the old Roundout Electric Building, which currently, you know, looks like this has been abandoned for some time. It's uh, kind of just, you know, loss of life in, in the building. So what we're going to do is we're, we're converting it to eight tenant spaces to provide retail space, offices, uh, a little bit of a mixed use, which uh, this is a rendering of what we're uh, just starting construction with now. So, and every space is almost every space is rented out on that as well. We have a you know a few uh, open spaces and leases to be signed. So with that, this is where we run into the um, issue for with, with planning board is as Neil mentioned, the first part of our site plan approval. The site was only allowed us to have X amount of spaces, which only allowed us to utilize part of the building. We were able to get three tenants in there. In order to get all eight tenants in there, we don't have enough parking. So we purchased the lot to the north, and we were going to use that as a um, supplemental parking. It's going to provide 22 spaces, which will give us enough to occupy this full building. Now, the issue is this is currently zoned R20. And if we could get this area to be zoned ATC, it will allow us to further develop this property with um, a four to six unit building, which makes us even more useful and more of a dense community. Well, with that, we're also looking into putting in uh, a system of sidewalks to connect all these, you know, the restaurant with all the businesses that are going in here, with the housing that's above and the businesses we have here. Um, we want to also connect this with sidewalks back to 44 to bring it back down to the past the arterial and connect it back to, you know, Raymond Avenue in the um, ATC district. And, you know, we're here before you tonight to, you know, discuss rezoning that to the ATC as well. Um, thank you, Jason. Uh, just uh, on the map, uh, just if you could point out the, uh, the location of... Uh of the uh, Shrek Electric Building, uh, just to kind of orient the uh, the board. Uh, what, what's happened here is that we we um, uh, the board had previously approved the extension of the Arlington Sound Center, kind of in a couple of different stages. Uh, initially, for the uh, the takeover of the building where Tinkleman is now, and then again an extension uh, to uh, uh, to the north side of Springside Avenue. Um, but the Shrek Electric Building, the little house that's that's actually you know, we have people dwelling mm -hmm. living in it. Uh, immediately to the north, and the Rondout, I'm sorry, the Rondout Electric Building are all, um, it, that entire area is owned for highway business, okay. which when you look at the size of the lots, I mean, it's it's an old carryover zoning. Yeah. It made sense at the time when it was done probably 20, 30 years ago. We never changed it when we updated the zoning in 2007. Um, given given what's what's been happening on the adjoining properties, uh, I don't believe that BH zoning, highway business zoning, is appropriate for those properties or for, um, mm -hmm. uh, I think that ought to, ought, ought to properly extend to include the property immediately to the north where they're going to put their parking facility as well. And and I think that's the upper limit of where, how far out you can extend the Arlington Town Center at some point is no longer Arlington. Um, but the question, you know, that's that sort of question one, does the board agree with that assessment? Um, uh, would it would it uh, would the board look favorably upon an application for rezoning of 33 Arlington, which is the Ronda Electric, and uh, the property immediately to the north? And I would personally recommend including Shrek Electric and the little house immediately to the north as part of that to kind of 
square up, if you were, as it were, the, um, the zoning for the area. And then the second question, and I guess this is really more one for conversation perhaps with the, uh, with the Land Use Committee, is uh, possibly extending the Arlington Town Center back down Arlington Avenue. Uh, Jason, if I could just sort of ask you to point uh, to include the houses that, that abut uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the westbound arterial over to, to Taft Avenue. We've got to remember we've got some residential dwellings, but we also have, there's a tax office on the corner of, of, of mm -hmm. Taft and, and Arlington. So it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of an interesting and yeah. mix, yeah. you know. And, and some of the houses are, are pretty well kept and some not so well kept. Yeah. Um, the extending the Arlington Town Center zoning in that manner would be consistent with the uses that are there, but would also allow for the reuse and possibly rehabilitation of some of the rougher buildings, perhaps for some commercial use. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally think I've looked at this. I've talked with uh, with Jason, Eric, and with Steve Tinkleman, uh, with with Eric Holman, our our staff planner, and and uh, I I personally think that it's it's warranted. I think it's a good idea, uh, but then again, the town board has to mm -hmm. has to make it consider you know consider that and whether you agree or not. What about Spins Bowling, the bowling alley there? Would you consider taking that whole area rather than doing this piecemeal, look at the entire area and decide if we're going to include that in? Uh, again, I, I think we sort of reached the upper limit of how far north we can push the, the ATC boundary. Plus, the Spins Bowling, um, it's, that is a highway business designation right now. Uh -huh. And uh, they have been in pursuing an application for the outdoor uh, uh, go-kart track. Okay, and that, I imagine that's not allowed in that, the... In the ATC, okay. no. Because no. it was interestingly, when the county did its pedestrian survey of Arlington, we walked up both lengths of those. Mm -hmm. The county believes that is part of Arlington. And you probably should take a look at the pedestrian survey and their recommendations mm -hmm. too, because they were very much in favor of sidewalks going up both ways, on both of, up to Spins Bowling and up through your development too. Actually, I kind of agree with Ann on that. I, I consider the bowling alley to be part of Arlington, so that should be part of the center. So if you cut that in, I think that would be a wise decision. Well, but well, not if we're going to limit their outdoor yeah, recreation. We don't. We want. We don't want to impede a business. But you also have residential neighborhood over there. Those carts it could be a little sketchy. I mean, they're not super quiet. I've heard the ones in the in the mall, and they're they're kind of loud. And you know, I didn't think the cover. There's no cover. I don't it really speak out against it having fear of that outdoor car at night, which I know is something that we can speak about about the times, which I know that they wouldn't be able to do in past hours. So. I didn't think they were going to pursue the cars outside. Was I thought that was well, one. You know, it's it's a seasonal thing, and yeah. and honestly, they've been kind of on again, off again with their site plan. Uh, uh, right now, they're, they're off again. Yeah, and also, I'm not so sure how popular that is anymore because there's one out there on Over Rocker. Yeah, by the drive-in. I don't think they're actually f run very often. A couple times, uh, it's a little different. It's hit or miss depending on when they're running them. Again, it is based on the, the weather. Right. The days they get customers of the Neil, yeah. those properties behind there, back where Dutch's overhead door is, where are they all zoned? Uh, uh, all, all of the properties up there are R R20. Residential half acre. Dutchess over door is still. Dutchess no. Dutchess is, is highway business as well. Yeah. That's that's why I'm. I, I don't agree yeah. that that spins bowling should be changed because otherwise you end up with a little piece of, of BH zoning surrounded by BTC mm -hmm. and again. Well, I was going to throw think, the overhead doors in there too, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that those properties ought to remain as as highway business. Um, you know, the other consideration, too, is that when the, the ATC zoning is, is generous in terms of what it allows, uh, but it's also very generous in terms of uh, things like setbacks and what have yeah. you. Um, I, I think we need to be very careful, particularly when the board is, um, uh, you know, acting on its own to change zoning, that you're, that you're not setting up a s situation where you're almost giving somebody a gift to come in and do something else, like, you know, if Spins Bowling decides that they want to just, you know, sell their property off, next thing you know, you've got some some high density use in that location that you hadn't anticipated. Mm -hmm. I think that that it's been the board's practice, and I'm in favor of it. 
that when people typically come in and they you know they need they have to have a project and say this is what I want to do and that's what it gets zoned for. Um, in this case, the the uh, the other extension of the Arlington Town Center um, that that I'm suggesting that the the Town Board and the Land Use Committee look at uh, for the houses on on on, uh, on Arlington Avenue mm -hmm. uh, and over including Shrek Electric, that would be on the Town Board's own motion. Uh, mm -hmm. But but something has to happen, particularly for Shrek Electric. Their their right. business is in some kind of flux. I don't know where they are going business wise. I hear you know rumors on the street sort of thing. I'm not suggesting they're in trouble or anything like that. Um, but the the building uh, certainly, my opinion, could use some help from from aesthetic standpoint. Um, and and should they choose to uh, to do something different there. Uh, having the appropriate Arlington Town Center zoning in place, I think, would be a benefit. Uh, the other thing, too, that, that Jason was talking about as, as part of the overall redevelopment that, that uh, Tinkleman is, is pursuing, um, and uh, hopefully the future redevelopment of Shrek Electric and the little house to the north of it, uh, is the extension of sidewalks, creating a you know, much more pedestrian-friendly um, uh, environment up there. and. You know, again, from the standpoint that this area was always part of Arlington, it was cut off by the arterial. Um, you know, the, the, the side, the lack of sidewalks to get people back down, at least to the intersection, and, and bring them down that Van Wagner Road extension, I think, really hurts in the long run. Um, so I think that there's some merit to considering, on a case by case basis, some of these additional properties. And, and asking the board to consider extending the Arlington Town Center on the board's own motion without, mm -hmm. you know, having any plan for development of those selected properties. My uh, my only concern is that people from the uh, townhouses will be going park an additional parking space that you're going to build. So, is that going to be an issue for the residents to go and park there? Because it'll be much easier to just go across. Well, well there would be. They'd be parking, I think, on their lot. I mean, that, yeah. that whole project parks itself. What is the uh, um, building by the parking lot? Because I didn't see that on the when I went to the planning board for lead agency on that map. It wasn't shown. By the parking lot. Nope. Yeah, Jason, talking about the additional the the new one nope. few units on the car. That one, yeah. Line. Yeah, that's this, brand new. This is what we because I know Gannon has two pieces of property there. Is that just one piece that, of the property? Just one lot, yes. So, okay. And what is that building? Because it looks like the parking lot seems smaller than the original map I saw. Well, that, that's a potential uh, I think multifamily it once the rezone happened. So, it's a, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be that, but that's that's a, an idea. Okay. Yeah, be and they would, if it were, they would park there too, as well as all those other people. Yes, that's correct. Probably be four to six units. Six <laughs> six units, I guess, uh, is the ideal. Mm -hmm. So, the, but the, the lot. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Uh, right now, we're in front of the planning board just to get the parking lot approved to be able to complete uh, 33 Arlington. Uh, this is just a, a future vision that we have. That if we can get this rezoned, it would permit us with an ATC. It would permit us to put a. Uh, multi-family house on that because right now is R20 neither one uh, could work for us mm -hmm. Jason this concept of mixed commercial residential you're completely full on most of the stuff you have one place left correct yep and even can you say that's attributed to the attractiveness of a Neighborhood like this, I, I believe it's uh, you know mass density. Everybody can come together. Uh, the restaurant is going to be offering, you know, it's a restaurant, it's a bar, it's going to be a bakery. There's a grab and go, a juice bar. All the businesses that we have filling in here are mostly women associated, so they're all kind of coming together. It's been it's been quite miraculous and, and surprising. And the concept, if I remember, when you first when we first started this, was the mixed. Use the, the involvement of residential into the same area where we would have commercial entity, and your track record seems to see that that's like an excellent idea. It, it's been you know for, even Stephen's been quite surprised how how successful so far that everything mm -hmm. is just kind of fell into place. I, I think, uh, and I think I did a, an excellent job from since I was on the on the planning board to get all the residents together. And to present this project, this project was very well prepared from day one. Um, and as you can see from now, it's it's a well done 
Good project. A lot of professional people moved in this apartments, and as we can see, um, there's more to it. So I agree with Neil that we need to do something more on that uh, Shrek uh, building because it's an eyesore and it's like, you know, we have a brand new suit and, and old shoes. It's got a proven track record, so I don't see yeah. opposition to it. Uh, my, my other thing was you have a couple of houses between uh, Randout and Shrek, correct? There are two single homes. There, there's one right here, it's just the one. Yeah. Just one. one. Yeah. Is that occupied, correct? Yeah, I know there was occupied. one There was, you know. Right. There's one across the street on the corner. Is, is there one? Yeah. Have you talked to them? <clears throat> and how are you going to accommodate this, this family? Because, we, you know, again, we're trying to make good quality of life for the for the people who live around the area. And then, you know. Um, yeah. we're, we're working with, with both homeowners for, for future plans that um, aren't really at the, the level to discuss yet. But we are working with the homeowners of both properties. Okay. Yeah, but they were already in the middle of a business community. Yeah. I mean, they were, yeah, industrial highway zoning, so. This property here is zoned BH already. Yeah. 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 My understanding was that that building was not right. always a, a, a residence. Well, it, was well, it used to be, from, from what I've heard, it used to be a business. Yeah, it used to, yeah, it used to be in business. It used use. to be a store some years ago. Yeah, something years like that. ago. Right, right, and in fact, I mean, the the front of the house is over the boundary line. I think the stoop is in the highway right of way. <laughs> no, I mean it's you know it's it's an old setup. Um, I, and the other thing that that's going on, and and uh, and and Jason, and Eric, and Steve have been have been great to work on. I work with, um, you know, sort of straightening out the the, the signalized intersection there, because yeah. you know, let's face it. I mean, there's there's, <laughs> there's no perpendicular corners. Everything no, is coming nice. in at an odd angle. Uh, a couple of years ago, the town board authorized the the closure of that Van Wagner Road because you had people just you know sailing through there to get out to, back out to Taft, illegal movements, all of that. So, the highway superintendent has installed a uh, a, a gate. Um, yeah. a, so that's up; it's functioning, um, and so we we no longer have that 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 pass through traffic occurring there. Um, but the it always sort of left. You know, what are we doing with the signal? Um, and uh, the result of a meeting uh, that occurred a couple of weeks ago, about a week and a half ago, um, uh, our highway superintendent, um, uh, fire police, uh, 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 Steve's office, uh, I th think we've you know kind of worked out what mm -hmm. the signal arrangement would be. Um, and so it's basically it's a relocation of the existing signals. We're not going to have to go and spend a whole lot of money on, on putting up new facilities. Uh, but you will see a new it's like configuration, reconfiguration for that. I think makes a lot more sense than what mm -hmm. you see today. Yeah. Neil, have you touched base with Shrek at all? I have not. No. Yeah, I think before we end, we'll change somebody's uh, property. We definitely yeah. have to. Yeah, you know, I, I certainly will. Right. Hold the discussion. Yeah, with and, and any of the properties. I mean, that that's been you know our our our, our mo on any of the properties that that are, that are part of a, a part of a rezoning that are not is not specific or requested we, we do reach out to the owners we have had instances Ginsburg most recently a few months ago asked us to not to, to, to rezone mm -hmm. the old Fort family house on route 9 and that was pulled from the agenda so we will certainly go you know what happens to, to a regular residential house that becomes part of the ETC I mean what is the benefit for a regular homeowner I'm just curious uh, it, immediately there there's, there's no there's no yeah. change I mean if there yeah. is a single family house today it'll be a single family house tomorrow and able to use be used as such um, uh, where where it may be a benefit if, is if um, uh, the, you know the owner uh, had some idea of, of perhaps uh, you know installing an apartment as opposed to doing a, a home occupation with a special or, sorry, uh, uh, an accessory uh, apartment with a special permit. Uh, we allow two family homes in in the Arlington Town Center. The, the additional thing too is that you may have somebody who uh, may wish to sell their house, for um, commercial use, an off, you know, a law office, an engineering office, which of course uh, uh, there is there is an engineering office on on the Tinkleman site, uh, so that sort of opens up those opportunities. And when you think about um, you know the location of some of these homes hard up against the westbound arterial, that's n honestly not a bad option to have. Yeah, it probably would help um, the value of the property as well. Right. Yeah. Right, right. So uh, basically, allow it allows for commercial conversion if if the owners are looking to do that. Don't mind me asking a lot of questions. It's near my house, but um, yeah. is the um, other piece of property of Gannon's being considered for no. the ATC? No, okay. no, just this one. I and again, I I think we we sort of push the the northerly limit as far as what right. I would consider yeah. to be 
ATC eligible properties. So where are we going from now? Do you have to present this to the, to, to the planning board, this presentation? Well, what, uh, what I'll do is I'll work with Jason and, and Eric to put together the application for, uh, for their properties. And what I will also do is to include a recommendation on some of the other properties to be included. Um, and it will come back before the town board. Uh, there will be another long or short discussion. Uh, and then uh, assuming the board is in agreement on, on the selection of those properties, you would accept the application, make the referral over to the planning board, and the planning board then has an opportunity to comment on that. You know, it looks like you know, the board here from the center is in favor of going forward. Okay. Just you know, make sure everybody else on board is there. and We don't, A, miss a property that we think belongs in there, or we put somebody in that doesn't belong in there, and make sure the neighbors around there are mm -hmm. kept informed because we've yeah. gone a little bit outside the box. So we want to make sure all the neighbors are informed of what's going on. And maybe if you had a, a meeting and four neighbors, what your loan plan plan is for the whole project up there. Because I know there's other pieces besides this. So they know where they're going. And you guys have been very good about doing that as well. I know yeah. the previous project residents said you guys were always in touch with them and working with them. So we do appreciate that. Thank you. But just Thank to, you. to verify one question. So Tinko May purchased Randout building. Yes. And in process of Shrek, Building or they they no, no, Shrek, no, Shrek no, no, is not no, they're they're on the, they're on the table only from the standpoint that I think that they should be included. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I, I have had no discussions yeah. with them. Yeah, okay. um, so basically, we're just covering the, both sides of the street. Well, they may hate the yeah, idea. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then we would leave them alone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Even though Shrek would be a perfect completion part to this. It, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's kind of a key piece. Right on the court. Yeah. 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 It's a business area you want to keep them involved. Yeah, we don't, nobody knows what their future plans are. It's a big piece of property. And Does it change the money he would pay in taxes? I'm just curious. No. No. Okay. Just checking. No. <laughs> that would be my question. No, and also, my property. Yeah, and also they're not part of the mm -hmm. um, Arlington Business Improvement District, which carries an extra tax. So they don't receive that either, and they're not part. Okay. okay. That building looks nice. Thanks for using it and repurposing it. Everything you've done so far is unique and different, mm -hmm. and it's worked out very well. It's very. Yeah. It's, it's a common area. You go through it, it looks like its own little neighborhood. It's a common area, and it's a benefit is it's tied into the neighborhood behind it. So it definitely makes a makes a total neighborhood. How does the drainage work in a parking lot on a hill? Would it, I mean, there's usually the snow goes into the dirt instead of, I'm just curious since I live on the bottom section where that would be. Well. Does it affect it at all? Of uh, I guess this will be the first winter, but um, I mean, it's, been well designed. I'm just curious. But, uh, you know, we have rain gardens and we have some pervious pavement. A uh, good good portion of the parking lot is a uh, pervious pavement, in fact. Mm -hmm. And then as you walk between the two, sorry, point the wrong drawing, but um, this is all rain garden area. Right, I was talking about the proposed parking lot. Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah. that's up on the hill. <laughs> Somewhat more. Yeah. But we're actually in the process with the planning board designing that. Okay, right I was now. just so making yeah. sure that you think about that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, ultimately, ultimately some of the flow will come down onto like that Arlington Avenue intersection, but there are already drainage structures in the road. Uh, but the key to it here is to making sure that, that, that um, you know, the, the, the post-construction flows don't exceed what's occurring today uh, and that, that the water is not only, you know, captured and, and detained uh, for volume purposes, but it needs to be treated for quality as well. And so I would expect that, you know, pervious pavement and rain gardens and things that we, mm -hmm. features we see elsewhere will be carried over on that design as well. But if need be, we're working with LRC you now. They were the uh, the engineers for across the street, really uh, to, top notch uh, guys. So we'll, whatever whatever they end up coming up with, we know it'll be right. I don't know how to ice skate, so if there was one on the road, I'm out of luck. A duly noted. <laughs> Anybody else any other questions? No. So I, I should okay. read the resolution, and we we're going to do this assignment here. There is no resolution. There is no resolution. This is just, this is just a discussion. discussion. Just a discussion. Okay. No resolution. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can read the next resolution, Mr. Carlos. I wasn't that eager. <laughs> Resolution 2, whereas the building department has received a cost proposal from Central Hudson Gas Electric to have its exclusive efficiency contractor, Lime Energy Company, for the replacement of the exterior light fixtures at the police court facility located at 19 Tucker Drive, Poughkeepsie, New York. Now, therefore, be it resolved 
that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize the deputy supervisor or his designee after consultation with the town attorney to the town to execute a contract for the replacement of the exterior light fixtures at 19 Tucker Drive at a cost not to exceed his proposal price of $3,286.33. Said contract to be in substantially the form annexed together with the same modifications to the arbitration contractor damages and liability and indemnification clauses as were provided in the early contracts between the town and Lime Energy. And be it further resolved that said action is a type 2 action requiring no <coughs> further environmental review. So moved. Second. We motion second. Any questions on this one? Yeah, this is actually really good because we're switching over to LED lights, right? So this is going to save us money on the electricity, too. Bright or light, too. We yeah, it's... Up at Adams and it does look different. Yeah, because... The payback on is 18 months. Yeah. And it's 18 months comes, what we're putting into will be there in Central Hudson is, through their incentive program, is picking up $2,891 wow. of that cost. That was a sixth And that we, the workplace study survey that we just had all our employees tell us one of the two top complaints was lighting leaving the workplace. Mm -hmm. So this takes care of one whole major section of it. Raises okay, money. Mm -hmm. Motion second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. We resolve that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie is hereby authorized the deputy supervisor to execute a three year school resource officer agreement with the SPAC of Hill Union Free School District. Go on, go on. Don't right. we need 2B? 2B. Oh, well, what? apologies. My head's uh, date rule that I have. Whereas the building department has received a cost proposal from Central Hudson Gas Electric to have its exclusive efficiency okay. contract to Lime Energy Company for the replacement of the interior and exterior light fixtures <clears throat> at the Auto Center located in 25 Tucker Drive, Police, New York. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie is hereby authorized to deputy supervisor or his designee after consultation with the attorney of the town to execute a contract for the replacement of exterior light fixtures. At 25 Tucker Drive, at a cost not to exceed its proposed price of $2,926.70. <clears throat> Said contract to be in substantially the form annexed together with the same modifications to the arbitration. Contractor damages and liability and indemnification clauses as were provided in the earlier contract between the town and Lime Energy will be a further result that said action is to action requiring no further environmental review. So move. Second. The motion is second. This one, there's no mistake. This is not exterior lights, these are regular light fixtures. We'll make a motion to make that change. It's just light fixtures inside the. It says interior and exterior. At the auto center, that's not. Yeah, auto center is just the interior. Interior? Oh. <laughs> okay. I'll make a, I'll second your notion on changing the okay. exterior to interior. Yeah, replacement of exterior to interior. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those in favor of the resolution? Aye. 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 Motion passes 6 0. <clears throat> We resolve Town Board Town of Poughkeepsie is hereby authorized the Deputy Supervisor to execute a three-year school resource officer agreement with the Spikeville Union Free District for 2017 through 2019 at 70000 $70,000, $80,000 $80, per year respectively, with the foregoing payments being adjusted by the same rate of change as in the Town of Poughkeepsie, Town of Poughkeepsie PPA contract for salaries and benefits. During the applicable period, the school resource officer agreement to provide the school district a school resource officer who shall be a police officer of the town of Poughkeepsie assigned to the Spanko District pursuant to the terms and conditions set forth in the said agreement. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any questions on this one? I'd just like to thank the chief for the extra effort he did in working on this contract and getting an increase for the years going forward to cover more of the cost of the officer being there because he's there a good percent of the year. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 6 0. Yeah. We resolve the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize settlement of tax certiorari proceeding instituted by the gas patrolling by the tax assessment uh, roll 2015 as shown attachment consent judgment. And be further resolved that the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie does hereby authorize John J. Baisley, Deputy Supervisor, Kelly W. Burnett of Vanderwater, Vanderwater LLP, and Kathleen Tabor, Town Assessor to such to sign such a papers are uh, as are necessary to effect with set settlement. So moved. Second. Okay. Most of any questions on this one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I would normally you say six zero. Six zero. Okay. Six zero. Okay. <laughs> Be it resolved, the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie does authorize the provisional appointment of Thomas P. Comerford 
to the full-time position of Network Support Specialist Police Department at grade 9, step 4, salary $29,031 per hour. Excuse me. Oh, did I turn those two around? Yeah, that would be really good. $29.31 per hour. Which appointment is a provisional appointment pending the results of the civil service exam effective November 21st, 2016 and subject to a probationary period of not less than 8, no more than 20 six weeks for civil service law and be further resolved that the deputy supervisor or his designee is authorized to execute and file all documentation required by the Dutchess County D Department of Human Resources in connection with this appointment so move. Second. Motion second. Any questions on this one? No? I would just like to thank the chief for uh, effort to put forward to uh, find Mr. Comerford who definitely be a benefit replacing our IT specialist now. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. <laughs> Whereas it appears that certain water and sewer rents assessments and charges due to various districts and town Poughkeepsie from properties within said districts have not been paid for more than 60 days and are liens against said properties, then notice of those delinquent charges are detailed by the town software support analyst has been forwarded to Dutchess County for town law 198, 1K, and 3D by November 10, 2016, whereas delinquent charges for property maintenance have also been so forward to the County Duchess pursuant to Town Code Section 159. Now, therefore, be it resolved, Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie hereby ratifies the notification of Duchess County regarding delinquent sewer and water rents and charges and property maintenance charges and request that the amount stated as being in default be levied against the property liable, therefore, water $291,089.25, sewer $196,569.50, and other $7,724.71 for a total of $495,383.46. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any questions on this one? So this is for residents that pay late water and sewer. Residents or commercial. Mm -hmm. commercial. And the last one on the bottom, the $7,000, could be for people like Mr. Armstrong brings up that don't pay their own. Um, we have to maintain the property. And legal notices the, and stuff yeah, like that. This is what Mark talked about last week. Yeah. yeah. This had to be in before this meeting, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that yep. the same page. All those in favor? Thank you. Aye. 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 Motion passes 6 0. Resolution 7. Whereas Mark Fink, software support analysis, an analyst requested and received a proposal from the computer systems integrators, CSI, to replace the existing virtual server at town hardware at town hall with new equipment that will combine both a virtual server and a virtual desktop environment. And whereas this equipment will allow the existing life of vir the end of life of the virtual server hardware to be used by the police department as a backup and disaster recovery site and will remove the need for the town to purchase a new standalone server for the court. And therefore, now therefore be resolved that the town board of the town of Kipsey does hereby authorize the supervisor or his designee to execute documents after review and consultation with the town attorney with computer systems integrator CSI at a cost not to exceed its proposal price of $174,670.99 to be billed for in a 60-month lease, and be it further resolved that the contract exempt from the town's purchasing policy because it is a state bid contract, and it is a type, and it is a type two action requiring no secret review. So moved. We have a motion set. Any questions on this one? Just that this is a five-year lease and it was budgeted this year to move forward. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6-0. We resolve that the town board of the town of Poughkeepsie is hereby accept with regret the retirement of Debbie Andrew from the town of Poughkeepsie Highway Department effective January 27th, 2017. So we'll second. second. Motion second. Any questions on this one? Just like to thank Debbie for all the years of service over in the highway department and helping Mark out. And she was always a pleasure when you called over there. She worked in the building department too for years, so for she's been here for a long time. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. The result Town Board, Town of Poughkeepsie, is hereby reappoint Trish McLaughlin to the Board of Assessment Review for a term of five years, commencing on October 1st, 2016, and expiring September 30th, 2021. So moved. Second. 
Motion we'll second. Any questions on this one? Trish does a great job. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 6 0. Be resolved, the Town Board of Town of Cape does hereby accept the certification of attendance for Richard Davidson from Dutchess County Planning Federation for the course entitled Design for Density, meeting your community challenge land use needs, held on October 26, 2016, a copy of which is attached. So moved. Second. Move motion second. Any questions on this one? I'd like to thank Rich for going through and taking this class because all he's been through, I give him a little credit for jumping right back up and moving on. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 6 0. Be resolved, the Town Board of the Town of Poughkeepsie does hereby accept the certificate of attendance for Peter Fanuelli from the Dutchess County Plan. <laughs> Finette. I was thought it was I make it the way Ann said it. It was. Oh, <laughs> right. that's Fanel well. Fanelli. All right. From Dutchess County Planning Federation for the course entitled Designing for Density, Meeting Your Community's uh -huh. Changing Land Use Needs, held on October 26, 2016, a copy of which is attached. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any questions on that one? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 6 0. 11 is. Legal. A notice of petition that will be filed with legal in reference to Neptune <clears throat> Capital. Number 12 Ugh. is O'Neill Dutton. Mr. Deputy Supervisor, this is, uh, we spoke about this before. This is a lengthy resolution, so maybe we could break it and a few of us could help you go through it. Oh, maybe you do two pages and somebody else does two pages and all the letter. You want to do a whole thing? Or you oh, want to do like the Roman used to do? Yes, no. Oh. I'll, I'll do the whole thing. If you like. right. I'll read it and then we can um, move on. Yeah, this, well, by the way, this was the short version I gave you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks, Neil. Oh yeah. Neil, yeah, do you want to make any comments before we read this, sir? Um, I guess just a um, more procedural, um, the last meeting the board had closed the public hearing <clears throat> and then set tonight for uh, making a decision. Uh, in the interim, uh, and Danielle, I'll, I'll defer to you on this, I, I don't know, I assume that Jim Nelson had, had spoken to you. We had received an email uh, from Luke Hoffman representing O'Neill Dutton uh, requesting uh, uh, an adjournment on uh, action on this uh, the t tonight. Um, but you've already set, the board has already closed the public hearing and uh, determined previously that you, and you don't have to make a decision tonight, but you had said that you would consider a decision. So I guess the first order of business would be whether or not you wish to um, again adjourn the matter to a future date. Um, and, and it's up entirely up to the board. And so if you choose not to, then you should, uh, I guess, what, acknowledge it on the record that you're just going to, you, you receive the communication and... Yes, and, and move ahead and make a decision right. and vote on the resolution. The um, representation that there was a email received by Mr. Kaufman is correct, and Mr. Nelson had filled me into that effect, a copy of which uh, is here tonight in the file. Okay. And just also let you know, there was an email sent from one of the residents, Doreen Tignilli, which everybody has, and being that the public hearing has been closed, we're not going to bring out what it was. Did you get one, Yeah. No. Did you get it? No. Get it? no. Oh, it was sent out, it was copied, everybody just didn't get their email. I think, I, I personally think, um, you know, this is in my ward. This has been ongoing uh, for a very long time. I, I'd like to put this <laughs> to bed. I don't think it's getting any better. We've wasted a lot of town resources at a lot of different meetings with myself, with Neil, with planning, a lot of different people, a lot of different parts have been moving on this project to really try to help make this project work. And it's just the density is too much. There's not enough open space and not enough parking. Um, we've talked about this with, with the developer numerous times. And I just think it's time to move on. Uh, I don't think this project is going to get any better. He doesn't seem to want to bring it down a little bit. We tried to go the commercial route, and he, you know, he placed a, uh, a restaurant in with no additional parking. He didn't take anything away. I mean, I, I, for myself, I think that was the, the last, that was the biggest aspect. We really tried to work with them so many different times. The density just never came down. The unit count stayed the same, no matter what we tried to do. Um, and there's just too many variables that uh, it, it's not, it's not going to work with what he wants to put in there. So I, I could go on. I've, I've got a list of things I could talk about in my head. 
But I think we should read this, and, and personally, I'd like to close it down. Uh, it's time to move on, and maybe somebody else come up with a better idea for that project. I'll support your decision. Mm -hmm. Mike, one of the reasons we waited was, you know, because your decision meant a lot was your word. And I know over the years this has been on the agenda for multiple years. And starting from day one, this was not ever a highly accepted project. It was always a project that we always had issues from day one, with, whether it was parking, clean space, you know, density, you know, with the road, there was always issues. This was never really addressed. The roads went, they left, and they came back, and they really have never brought anything to the table. So, Mike, I have to be more or less in the favor of the realm you had. Yeah. And we'll, I agree. Yeah. Before we vote, you know, can you give us an update about the city side? How, how's it going with, on the city side? Uh, uh, well, I, to, the, to the extent I can, uh, they had received their, uh, their site plan approval. The, um, the maps were eventually signed uh, some months ago, I think back in the spring, I think. Um, seems so long ago. Mm -hmm. um, uh, at this point, I believe they, they had submitted applications for building permits. Um, there was some... I guess I'm going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Again, this is all scuttlebutt to me. Uh, on the uh, the fees for the building permits, my understanding is that recently the, they paid their fees, and I, I don't know if the permits were actually issued, or but they would seem to be that they would be soon. Mm -hmm. um, so I assume that they're ready to move they're, on. They're, they're moving on the city side, yes. Good. Well, my question is to Danielle, if we say no, what happens? Well... I think we'd have to have a conversation um, with Mr. Nelson and, and see what to do. But if this is something that's been hanging on, mm -hmm. I think there needs to be some kind of action if the board deems it appropriate first, and then we'll address if that's going to be an issue moving forward with the city. Well, and just because we say no now doesn't mean they can't come back with a with better an design later. I mean, this right, doesn't no, yeah, slam yeah. the door. It just says we're not going to accept what you're putting before us now. Right. I, you know, there had been suggestions uh, that, you know, and, and I had I had said this to both uh, Luke Kaufman and, and Finbar O'Neill at several points in time over the past several years that um, perhaps what they should do is is to uh, ask the board to put the application in, in abeyance or, or withdraw it and then go build the city side and come back yeah. at a later date. They never seem willing to do that. I mean, the practical effect of... of, of if the board votes this resolution, which is a denial resolution, uh, is that they would have to amend their plans to ensure that all of the improvements, all the curbing, and there's a little bit of, I think there's a little bit of parking and some landscaping that actually is on the on the town side, as shown on these overall maps, that they would have to pull those back into the city side, and then the the town board portion of it would remain fallow until such time as they come in with a plan that the board can get behind. Mm -hmm. And and Anna's absolutely right. You know, there I, I think what's important to keep in mind here is that the, the resolution sort of points a path for them to get to an approval if they're willing to do it. Mm -hmm. And my question to you, Neil, is that is this because they have the financial um, allocated for both side city and the town, that's why they're not willing to do that? I, I don't understand their motivations okay. on a lot of things, to be honest with you. Uh, and I, I certainly don't understand their, their finances, and I don't pretend to. I, you know, I'm not privy to any of that, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but but I think it is important that you know the city the city made a decision. Uh, they they granted the rezoning some time ago. More recently, the site plan approval. So, whatever is occurring on the city side, um, you know, all of that's going to go ahead, presumably. Um, what remains of this this three and a half acres of this larger site? Um, what what the disposition? I I can't speak to it. Well, they they have the but like I say, this this is important that the board through the resolution yeah. is saying. <laughs> If you want to do this, this is the direction right. you need to go. But this was always their plan all along, that they were going to build it in stages, and the town portion was always at the end. So oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I absolutely. mean, we're not really interfering with their plans no, at all. No, the last, the last phasing plan I had, um, uh, and I, it's now several years old, I assume it's still somewhat representative, uh, phase six was the town portion of it, yeah. and there was never any guarantee that they were going to build it. Right. The change in the market and the change we've seen in the, uh, so many plans, originally it was all these housing developments, and you went to condos, the market may change it. They may get this done and realize it could be all commercial. Yeah, right. So, you know, well, they can always look over a plan as they go forward and come back and change it. Well, and before they even started, well, when they started this, there wasn't a big apartment going up across from Shadows in the city, too. So, I mean, maybe they're not going to be attract enough clientele to fill it. 
and well, then they wouldn't continue yeah, on. Yeah, and, and the, the approvals for that that portion of it were, I mean, they go back to when Colette La Puente was mayor. Yeah. So it's been some years. It was about 600 units. Yeah, and the, the market had to improve enough for somebody to be willing to make the investment. Yeah. So the market may change again. Yeah. <clears throat> Good. Everybody done speaking? Let me start reading. <laughs> Whereas a meeting held on March 5th, 2014, the town board received an application from O'Neill Group done in LLC here and after O'Neill to amend the existing IH Heavy Industry Zoning designation of tax parcel number 6062-02763508 located at 1 Duchess Avenue, Poughkeepsie, New York to apply a waterfront housing overlay district, WHOD, designation to approximately 3.8 acre portion of the site located in the town, and whereas the proposed zoning amendment is expressly intended to accommodate a proposed 84-unit multifamily residential development here and after Dutton project, on the approximately 3.8 acres in the town that is part of a larger proposed mixed-use waterfront redevelopment involving the approximately 14.3-acre portion of the site located in the city of Poughkeepsie. And whereas the city of Poughkeepsie Common Council, acting as lead agency for environmental review of proposed action, accepted a final environmental impact statement on March 19, 2012, and adopted an issue of statement of findings relative to the overall project on March 7, 2012. And whereas the city of Poughkeepsie Planning Board has granted conditional site plan approval and other approvals for a portion of Dutton Project located in the city. And whereas on September 18, 2014, the Town of Poughkeepsie Planning Board recommended adoption of the WHOD zoning amendment to the Town of Poughkeepsie Town Board, which written recommendation was transmitted to the Town Board by memorandum dated October 9, 2014. Whereas a written recommendation dated November 5, 2014, was received from the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Economic Development, stating that adoption of requested zoning amendment is a matter of local concern. And whereas the Town Board convened a public hearing on the proposed Dutton project on November 5, 2014, and adjourned said public hearing on November 19, 2014, whereas before the public hearing was reconvened on November 19, 2014, O'Neill requested that the town adjourn the public hearing indefinitely and accept no additional public comment. And whereas the town board accepted O'Neill's request and adjourned indefinitely the public hearing on the Dutton project, whereas by email on June 1, 2016, O'Neill requested the town reconvene the public hearing, but due to the passage of time, the town's adjourn would be prudent to re-advertise the public hearing. Whereas the public hearing was held on August 17, 2016, and was adjourned to October 19, 2016. Whereas the public hearing was reconvened on October 19, 2016, and was thereafter closed on October 19, 2016. The town board set November 16, 2016, is the date by which a decision of the application would be considered. Whereas the town clerk notified the clerks of the surrounding municipalities of several public hearings pursuant to GML 239NN. And therefore, be resolved after due consideration of the proposed Dutton project, the town plan, and the WHOD zoning requirements, and the planning board and the county planning department recommendations, the town board has determined approval of requested zoning amendment is not in the best interest of the town for the following reasons. One, the proposed project is not consistent with the purpose of the WHOD. Pursuant to section 210-21.1a of the town code, WHOD, Overlay District is to encourage the provision of mixed uses along the Hudson River waterfront by the town of Poughkeepsie over the course of several years, including several meetings preceding receipt of the March 5, 2014 application for zoning amendment. The town board made a repeated request of the applicant to provide a mix of commercial uses in addition to the proposed residential units. The applicant has not provided to the board a revised layout to pick the viable commercial mix integrated into the project. To obtain favorable recognition by the town board, the project would need to incorporate neighborhood scale commercial development, including shops and services, that will be available to residents of the project as well as visitors to Waterfront. The Dutton project, as proposed, consists solely of residential units without any commercial development and therefore inconsistent with the WHOD. The proposed 84 residential unit is too high for the amount of land available. A, pursuant to section 210 21. Point one, C5, the maximum resident density is 28 units per acre as determined by the town board. 
While the proposed project takes numerical advantage of maximum potential development density, it does, not, it does so by providing impervious building, parking spaces, and driveway aisles in lieu of usable green spaces and common areas for residents and visitors. While the layout for the project depicts landscaped areas that meet the minimum set forth in the code in most cases, these areas, areas are nothing more than narrow strips of land a few feet wide containing grass and some trees and shrubs. None of these areas will be established for or suitable for residents to sit or gather. To obtain favorable recognition by the town board, the project will need to incorporate areas of usable open space as that term is defined in the zoning law specifically. An unenclosed portion of the ground of a lot which is not devoted to driveways, access road, parking spaces, which is free of structures that will interfere with the functionality of the open space and the intended use of the property, which is no less than eight feet in height with at any point, which is available and accessible to all occupants of the buildings, building or buildings on said lot or on a separate dedicated lot as part of a common development scheme for purpose of active or passive outdoor use. B, in order to obtain a town board recognition, the amount of usable open space would need to be 10 to 35 percent of the total square footage of the site following the examples of other overlay districts as set forth in Chapter 210 of the Town Code. The lack of any outdoor areas proposed as green space and common areas, i.e. usable open space, indicates that the overall residential density, density is too high for a site and must be reduced in order to provide a quality living environment for the residents. The proposed project is devoid of any on-site recreational amenities for residents. A. Although a determination as to provision of on-site recreation space is typical, the purview of the planning board pursuant to Town Law 274-A6, the Town Board, through its sole discretion to approve, modify, or deny an application for a WHOD zoning amendment, has determined the unique sitting of the project on the banks of the Hudson River compelled the inclusion of on-site recreation as part of the proposed plan. While the Town Board may otherwise leave the specific type and location of recreation facilities to a determination by the Planning Board during site plan approval, the Town Board has determined that some level of recreation facilities should be incorporated into the project design, and that such facilities cannot merely be a walking path. Further, the Town Board has determined that the applicant's proposed improvement of the waterfront lot adjacent to the Dutton property site that will be available to the general public is not a substitute for providing on-site recreational amenities for residents of the proposed development. The project lacks sufficient parking for residents and visitors. Pursuant to Section 210-211-C5, the minimum parking shall be provided at a ratio of 1.5 spaces per dwelling unit for such ratio as may be approved by the Town Board. While the project appears to meet the minimum parking standard on a per unit rate basis, the Town Board has determined that parking should be provided on a per bedroom basis in order to ensure sufficient parking for the project. The Town Board has been advised by the staff that a rate of 0.75 parking spaces per bedroom was recently applied to the Fairview Commons project in order to ensure sufficient parking. The Town Board has been further advised by the staff that the Fairview Commons project was primarily designed to meet the needs for student housing in the vicinity of Marist College and at a rate of 0.7 parking spaces per bedroom was appropriate since not all expected student residents own vehicles. The Dutton project is not a student housing project and instead is proposed as a market rate multifamily development. As such, the Town Board has determined that a parking rate of 1.25 spaces per bedroom would be appropriate in order to ensure sufficient parking not only for residents but for guests as well. Inasmuch as the applicant has not provided any information as to the number of bedrooms that will be available under the project, the town board has no way of determining whether adequate parking will be provided using the parking space specified. The town board also notes that the ownership of the units will also affect the amount of parking required, with a larger parking demand for rental units as opposed to condominium ownership. In the absence of such information, the board is unable to make a favorable determination that the project will provide sufficient parking for residents and visitors. The proposed driveway aisle width of 24 feet is too narrow. As depicted on the proposed project layout, several driveways providing access to the resident units are 24 feet in width. Pursuant to Section 210-92H of the Town Code, a typical driveway width for this type of project will be 26 feet in order to provide sufficient backup and maneuver room because curbs are between opposing off-street parking spaces. The reason for the reduced aisle, which with appears related to the high density of the proposed project. In other words, in order to squeeze the proposed 84 units onto the site, aisle widths need to be reduced. The town board has determined that the driveway aisle widths for the proposed project should meet the standard of 26 feet as set forth in the zoning code. 
And they said standard is minimally necessary to ensure access for emergency vehicles and public safety for Dutton Project. The project layout does not provide sufficient room for snow storage. The lack of sufficient snow storage combined with the insufficient parking and restricted driveway hours indicated during a winter in which snow falls heavy, that movement on the site by residents, visitors, delivery vehicles, and emergency vehicles was set up conditions that were in danger to resident health, safety, and welfare. Similar to the issue of the lack of commercial development, adequacy of parking, driving outlet, and usable open space, the lack of adequate snow storage is related to the applicant's effort to maximize residential density at the expense of an appropriate, livable, mixed use environment. We have further resolved as an involved agency, the town board hereby finds and determines, consistent with the requirements of the State Environmental Quality Review Act here in Seeker, that the town board one has considered the relevant environmental impacts, facts, and conclusions disclosed in the Seeker review by the City of Poughkeepsie and in the Town of Poughkeepsie application for the WHOD district, and found that the proposed zoning amendment would have a significant adverse effect on the environment for reasons here set forth. Two, has weighed and balanced relevant environmental impacts with social, economic, and other considerations for a portion of the Dutton Project load in the town, and has determined for reasons set forth herein that the potential environmental impacts of the project outweigh any other social, economic, and community considerations. Three, finds that the proposed WHOD zoning amendment designation is inconsistent with the WHOD purposes and requirements as set forth in Town Code 210-21.1 for reasons set forth herein. Four, certifies that the requirements of 6 NYCRR 617 and the secret regulations have been met. Five, it certifies that consistent with social, economic, and other essential considerations from among, among the reasonable alternatives available, the proposed argument is not one that avoids or minimizes adverse environmental impacts to the maximum extent practicable. And that for the reasons set forth herein, the proposed Dutton project will not mitigate, avoid, or minimize adverse environmental impacts to the maximum extent practicable and required by secret and must without additional design changes as set forth in be denied. Be further resolved, the application loan yield that an LLC for WHOD zoning amendment is denied for reasons set forth herein. Be further resolved, the controller is authorized and directed to return to O'Neill Dutton LLC an application fee and any expected and unearned project review funds. So moved. Seconded. <laughs> Motion is second. Finish. Any further comments on this one? I think I did it Agreed. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'm sustain, uh, Mr. Dempsey. Okay. Okay. We have 5-4, one abstination. The motion passes. Here are you. 5-0-1. Yeah. Yeah, 5-0. Yeah. Sorry about that. 5-0-1. 13. <laughs> yep. Be it resolved that the Town Board of Town Poughkeepsie does hereby grant special consent to the following items to wit. Authorized Deputy Supervisor to sign Central Hudson Street Light Authority Order for Sheridan Drive. And be further resolved that upon objection of any member of the town board, an item may be removed from the list and voted on separately. So moved. Second. Motion second. Any questions on this one? Motion passes 6 0. Be it resolved that the town board of the town of Gibson is hereby authorized the supervisor and SU to Central Hudson Gas and Electric Corporation Street Lighting Authority Order for the installation of. A new 39-watt LED street light on pole P-66418 near 49 Shard Drive, a copy of which is attached. So moved. Second. Second. Motion second. Any questions on this? No. Motion passes 6-0. We have come to the end of our agenda. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for any comment on any town business at all. Second. second. All the favor? Aye. Aye. Come right up, sir. A couple weeks ago, I brought up about the dangerous situation at Bix Garage. I was wondering if you have anything to report on that. He had contacted him, and they're supposed to be working on it. When he was contacted, he's supposed to go out there and get him to clean it up and finally do something with it. I will follow up again in the morning to see how he made out with the contact, but I did call him the next morning. Okay, thank you. Mr. Armstrong. <coughs> I'm glad to see the Dutton resolution the way it came out. I a little curious. I said some of the numbers, like how they put a, a one and a half parking space in a 
in the apartment. That, that got a chuckle for myself. But anyway, on the Arlington Avenue um, Tinkleman project, I hope that a lot of study has been done that it sounds like we're cramping an awful lot in an awful small area, putting sidewalks in to increase pedestrian traffic along with the heavy traffic that's in that area to begin with because of the arterial. Uh, it just looks to me, without being too knowledgeable about it, that we seem to be putting an awful lot trying to squeeze it in one little area, especially with the kind of traffic and now foot traffic. I, I just hope this has been looked at to the, some of the safety features that may develop from stuffing this stuff. Very good, Mr. Armstrong. Have you been out there lately? Or? No, I haven't. That's why I say I, you know, I haven't really looked at it close. I go by there a lot, but it's usually either dark or I'm, who knows what. I'm not thinking about it to really look at it. I mean, I know the area from being around here my whole life, but looking at some of the development things, I haven't really studied it. But just from what I saw tonight, made me think that it seems like. You know, there, here's the people going to have to cross the street every day from the parking lot to get to the, the business. How did that first building get done without knowing there was enough parking spaces, it appears, when it was being done? Or something that was overlooked that there wasn't going to be enough parking? I don't know. No, one of the was basically was a warehouse before. It really wasn't. Well, a, I know what it yeah. was. I know what it was. I used to. Yeah. I know, but it sounds like some of the parking now that's needed for the air is going to be across the street. Across the street. Which so is, people now got to cross the street every day. I don't know. Whatever, whatever weather it is or whatever, but yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. are we are we trying to congest too much without some more, so looking at some of the safety factors? I think I they've, mean, they've you know, that's, at, that's an accident prone area all up with the arterial Taft Avenue. I hear it all the time. And, you know, it, it's, and then with the bowling alley, things are coming. But I'm just saying, yeah. are, are we seriously looking at the safety factor. You're going to have more pedestrian traffic, like I said. Uh, you got a, a bed of highway and, and vehicle situation as it is. I know we want the business. I understand that. But sometimes at what cost? I mean, yeah. how, how far do we push it? How far do we say, oh, well, here it is. I got mine. Hell, I don't care what happens with uh, traffic or people or whatever. Let them worry about it. No, I, agree. I don't believe they're thinking that. But I'm just saying it's, you know, that attitude seems down at Dutton. I mean, it seems they're saying... We don't care about the people's pleasure. We're going to make our money. We're going to stick stick as much in here as we can. I'm surprised the city's allowing them to do it. But, I mean, that's that's their doing. But, I don't know. I just, it just seems like business, make the money, and let's move on. But there's more to it. I think the people's have to be taken into consideration here. That project down here sounds a little bit crazy to me, too, with no no open area, no no decent roads and turnarounds. And the pro I can just see what that's going to develop. If it goes that way, 10, 15 years down the road, I can see what that's going to turn out to be. There's been projects that turned that way before for not being done properly to begin with. But I just hope you're looking into it close enough. I know I, I'm, I, I'm in agreement with your decision tonight that this is not good good enough as far as we should be concerned. If you want to come in, go from here. Uh, you know. Know, I'll gladly come in and go over and even go over and show you, you know, by actually being there. You see a whole different outlook because I think they really have going forward to look at. You want to come in or make a call? We can go over the plans here. We can actually go over and walk the site, and then you know you'll get a real good idea of what they want to do because it's a very convoluted looking site. You know, to look at the map, it doesn't give you the best perception. Oh, over here at Arlington yeah. Avenue yeah. area and stuff. Yeah. yeah. If you want to go over Yeah, I'd be yeah. interested in doing it. I mean, I may now take a little closer look at it. Uh, I think it's know. really nice. I mean, by, by dead ending where they did, that cut a lot of people off. Yeah. From no, I, I'm not My I'm only not concern saying. is the restaurant. Yeah. Because that will probably bring a lot of extra traffic. Yeah. So well, that's the other factor. That's my only concern. Restaurant. Because I just think. There's not know, a lot of. It depends on what kind of restaurant it is. the future as to what this may. But turn into the parking and what traffic and everything else. Yeah, come on, come on by. We can go over and I can yeah. go over with you. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I'm, I'm around yeah. here enough times I now and I can stop by day. and see if you're available. Yeah. We'll I'll go over. A quick look or something or whatever. Because I think it's one of the nicer projects he's done and I think they've done yeah, a good I mean, job. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, it, is, yeah. it is definitely much nicer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, I, I've just seen too many times you just say, oh, well, uh, let him have it even though it says you can't. Yeah. Yeah, but actually, I think the parking is going to work because I think it's going to be a lot of employee parking across the street, yeah. and they're going to leave the closer spots for the uh, customers. Well, I understand. So that but there's the going to be more going coming going right the outside. The people that are working there still have to go across the street yeah, at least two to or walk. four times a day. Uh, yeah. 
I'm in for bad. work out for lunch back from lunch out it and you're going across the road right. it may not be heavy traffic but there's traffic I mean the more you put it out there the more chance of something happening I, I, I wouldn't like doing it every day back and forth back and forth back and forth to, to where I work whenever I have to but all right thank you for your time thank welcome you welcome. Yeah. Anybody else to address the board yes Yes. 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 I just want to remind everybody that if the Arlington's doing their um, holiday village, which is going to be right there on Raymond Avenue next to Craft a Cup and the open space on December third, starting at noon. And there's also going to be an eggnog crawl. And then at four fifteen, there's going to be a holiday parade. It's going to start up by Davis Harvard on May Street and then go down to Raymond and end up in the um, large Great Lawn of the um, Vassar Alumni Lawn. And then we're going to have a tree lighting there. So it's December 3rd, starting at noon, and probably ending up at, well, the parade starts at 4.15. Spiked eggnog or regular? <laughs> I'm not allowed to ask those questions. <laughs> it's a need to know. The town board needs to work in that place. They insert that cup to call it. That's right. Anybody got anything else? Yeah, I uh, just want to say I spent time with the sewer department this morning. They were fixing some sewer lines up on Scenic uh, Road, and they were using a new method where they uh, stick a, uh, like a, a balloon, uh, what is it? Plastic Plastic balloon material there. with a balloon, and they fix any cracks in the pipe. And it was truly really amazing. These guys work hard and are saving us a ton of money. So taxpayers should be very happy that this system's in. It's instead of digging up a road, uh, we're actually patching these things, and, and they'll last about 50 years, and they're guaranteed. So uh, Franco and his crew are doing a great job. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as all our departments do a great job, uh, I was lucky enough to work with one of them this morning. So uh, we're doing good. We're doing a good right. job. It's going to be back. back. Yeah. It's going to be back. Thank you. Anybody anything else? Bedtime. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. Close the favor. Aye. Aye. Thanks, everybody. Have a great evening. Thank you.